Good evening. I'd like to call to order the Committee of a Whole for October 2nd. If the clerk could please read the roll. Councilmember Wood. Here. Councilmember Garza. Here. Councilmember Hussein. Here. Councilmember Spatafore. Councilmember Spitzley. Here. Councilmember Jackson. Present. Councilmember Brown. Here. Councilmember Cost. Here. Seven members present. And we did get asked for an excused absence for Councilmember uh, Spatafore. Uh, with that, uh, Vice President. Um, Garza. Thank you, Council President. With that, I move the minutes from the September 18th meeting as written. All right, we have a motion on minutes. Are there any questions? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimously. This is an opportunity for public comment. If there's anyone in the audience that would like to make public comment, this is your opportunity. If you could come up to um, the, do to the uh, podium. State your name for the record, and you will have three minutes. Loretta Stanaway, and very briefly tonight, I wanted to talk about two quick things, the report for the warming and cooling centers, and just remind you once again, our community centers, there's at least one in each of the four wards. They're already open, they're already bathroomed and air conditioned. Um, in the fall, starting today through the beginning of the summer next year, they're open Monday through Friday until 9 at night, and on Saturdays until 5. So if you were using them, for instance, as warming centers, you would have a very minimal amount of time additional to what they're already open that you're already staffing and paying for in order to serve the public in this way. And then secondly, on the uh, Human Resources and Relations Community Services Advisory Board stuff, all I can say is keep them strong, make them stronger, do not weaken them. Thank you. Thank you. We have no one else here to make public comment, so we will move on with our agenda items. Um, the first item that we have is a discussion on the reports in the budget policies that were adopted um, on F for FY 2023-24. And as council remembers, there were three reports that you had asked as part of this. The first is the report on um, the warming center. Uh, these were um, given um, to us sep on September 1st. And um, then there was the report on um, stump grinding. And then lastly, there was a report on community health and social worker housing outreach specialist. Um, there were um, some questions that uh, were um, that our internal auditor did follow up with the administration on and if you'd like to go um, over those that would be fine Emily oh. can you hear me hello I don't think this We'll get that right before the end of the year. Um, so the questions asked for each report, the first was on the stump grinding. What is the recommendation going forward for stump removal? Is the plan to hire the outside contractor to remove 1,000 stumps for $100,000? And the answer was, the administration is having discussions with our departments and labor partners to see the best way to do this to get the most stumps removed from, for the dollars we could allocate. The mayor has not yet decided if this is an item we'll include in our budget proposal next spring. My understanding is that union leadership has also spoken to council leadership regarding resources available for stump grinding, and these conversations are ongoing. Are there any questions on the stump removing the report? Any questions? Does the administration have anything else they'd like to add to that report at this time? All right, next. For the warming and cooling center report, the outstanding questions from myself and council were first, what are the current operating hours of Let's Community Center? Um, council's interpretation of the given report is that the $250,000 estimate is only for operating the facility between the hours of 7 p.m. and 7 a.m. And the answer was per the city website, daily 8.30 to 4, plus whatever programming is happening on any given day or season. And then 
Another additional question, the budget policies ask for the cost of running a 24-hour day center for 60 days. If the $2,400 per day amount noted in the memo is used, that would be $144,000. Are these numbers accurate for 60 days? The answer was, this is the annual cost for a 24-7 shelter. It would be extremely difficult to determine an accurate cost for just 60 days. Uncertainties around if the 60 days are consecutive, consecutive or are based on weather needs a few days here and there based on high heat or extreme cold. If they were non-consecutive, costs would likely be higher due to a lack of predictability and availability in staffing, including security. $2,400 a day for any 60-day period in a year is an accurate estimate. HRCS continues to work on a proposal for the $800,000 allocation from the state and the $130,000 that was moved from the mayor's office budget. Are there any questions or comments about the warming and cooling center? Yes, Council Member, or Vice President Garza. Thanks, Council President. I guess I, it's just more of a clarity uh, to the, the person that spoke earlier. We do not have a community center in Ward 2, the only ward that doesn't have one. And any other questions? Council Member Cost. Yeah. Um, so. This keeps mentioning let's. Um, did they mention anything when they responded to you about um, the original proposal, which was the, the four community centers? About the hours that they're open? Or the price? Because I, I see oh, let's. The yeah. Oh, the utilization. Um, I think it was only four let's, but I can let Mark step in. I was. I only got answers about let's to clarify. This, this was only about let's, Mark? The, the warming cooling center? Because our original proposal was all four community centers. Right, I, my understanding is the, the cost sort of limits it to one location, but um, if there's if there's more, if there's more, if there's another question, if there's more information I can get from the director, I'm happy to do that. This is really about all the information that I have on these. I guess I would like to know, um, in the time period since our budget passed um, and we allocated funds for uh, warming cooling at the four community centers if any progress was made whatsoever yes progress has been made okay thank you I've got I were you, were you done councilmember yes. I didn't want to cut you off I've got councilmember Spitzley and did I see your hand councilmember Jackson and then I have a question councilmember Spitzley thank you madam president um, I think that my confusion just centers around um, I thought that as part of the budget we'd asked for a um, kind of a cost or a study for our proposal and so I, I get that 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 we got a lot of money the $800,000 allocation from the state but I thought that we were supposed to get some sort of um, you know estimation for how we had set it up which was like um, Councilman McCoss said the four community centers and basically how much would it cost um, and and I and I understand what um, Ms. Linden was saying about um, the 60 days and the uncertainties but surely there is so we can have some sort of estimate on how much it would cost to have a you know during a cold blue day or a cold warm day I mean we threw out 60 days but I think that you know, everybody's intent here was it might be 60 days, it might be 10 days. It depends on the weather. So, you know, um, but I, 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 was, I was hoping that we would get a cost for if we had to activate four, three warming centers. Um, and we do need a work, we do need a community center in Ward 2, but three warming centers, um, you know, for the days where the temperatures go below what they and they activate a cold blue or go above and they activate a cold red so that's what I thought we were going to get thank you councilmember Jackson thank you madam president so I'm just looking at the actual answers here um, especially we'll just go to the second one where it says HRCS continues to work on a proposal for the 800,000 allocation from the state and the 130,000 that was moved from the mayor's office budget. So that's roughly a million dollars minus a little bit. Is there, can you speak on like the proposal that you guys are working on? 
One of the first things I can tell you is it, it should be made very clear. We don't have the 800,000 yet, and we won't for at least the next several weeks, if not months, we hope by the end of the year. So we don't have that money yet. Um, I, I spoke with the director of HRCS today. Um, we should have an update for you on um, our proposal for, for the 800 and the 130. Um, we hope in time for your next council meeting on is that the 16th. Is that right? Yes. Um, I, I think we should have of some more information from you on that day. Thank you. Okay. Is that? Yeah, that's fine. I mean, that's all he can pretty much say right now. So it sounds like he had that information, and it would make sense because of the paragraph report here. At the end, it says there's a proposal that they're working on. So I'm glad that there's at least you know something on the horizon. So. We'll be looking forward to it. Councilmember Cost. Yeah, so I just want to go back because you said it was going to be, you know, it could take a long time to get this 800000 We allocated 130000 uh, starting July 1st. Um, and it sounds like we've just been in discussions. Um, I, I guess I don't, I would like to know why it's taking so long. These four community centers are already open. All we got to do is find additional staff, because you know finding additional staff is certainly going to be easier than a text message from someone in the administration when we have a hot day telling them that tell the seniors to go to a grocery store. That's embarrassing. I have constituents calling me, and that's what that was the response. Tell them to go to the grocery store. They can cool off there. It gets cool at night. It doesn't when your house is 100 degrees. It's still warm. My upstairs is warm as heck right now from today. Um, so I would like an actual solid answer on why we never moved on this hundred and thirty thousand dollars we put out. It's not like we had to build a building or find staff. We have that, correct? No. We um, be, the no, community we, centers we, aren't. They, they are staffed. They are not staffed for for this type of work. We don't have someone we can have sit in there. We don't have people that can sit in there. Not at the moment. We, we would need security staff. We would need additional overnight staff if we were talking about overnight. Uh, no, staff is not in place uh, for, for that purpose right now. Why would you need security staff if they're open during the day? I, I was referring to being open at night. If we're talking about a, a warming or cooling center being open overnight, we would need to have that staffed overnight. I guess I'd like to know still why the $130,000 was never taken seriously. Because, I mean, we asked, we were very clear. And we weren't taken seriously on this. And it's incredibly frustrating um, that we didn't have it prepared because we had hot days today or this summer um, towards the end in August that got into um, over 110 degrees on the um, heat index. You know, I have constituents that are both unhoused or senior citizens that don't have air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So if you could find out why we delayed so long on this, I would appreciate it, Mark. I, I wouldn't say that there was a delay. I would say that this, this process is deliberate and it's not as simple as hire more staff. But I, 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 I can get you a more detailed answer as to why it may look like we haven't moved on this Mark, 130. It is as simple as hiring more staff. They have bathrooms, mm -hmm. okay? They have a gymnasium where people can sit and cool off. Mm -hmm. They have water if people are thirsty, okay? All they need is staff. I, I, I'm not seeing why this is such a difficult issue. When the administration needs a new person, they just go and hire somebody immediately. They have okay. no delay in that. Right. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Council Member Hussain. Yeah, I think the only thing I would add is I, I think Mark will folks want to see. Yeah, I was hoping for at least at this point some type of feasibility study. Um, yes, this can or no, this cannot happen. Here's why. Um, when we look at the four community centers, I, I would think that we would at least be able to uh, determine on you know on any given day for a cold red or cold blue here's what it would cost right to staff overnight um, here's a security company we might be able to enter into a contract with that has a bank of employees um, where they might be able to you know shift somebody over there um, on short notice um, the you know maybe these are agencies that are willing to um, coordinate with the city of Lansing and they have volunteers that would be willing to um, come and, and maybe assist uh, something of that nature so I think that's what we're looking for if I can just take one quick second um, with regard to, I wanted to go back up and I apologize. Um, it does say, and this is the uh, stump removal piece, Mark. 
Um, and maybe this is for council leadership. The, the last uh, line of the answer says, my understanding is that union leadership is also spoken to council leadership regarding resources available for stump grinding. These conversations are ongoing. As it pertains to a stump grinder, a trailer for a stump grinder, um, and also the tractor loader, we've heard a number of things. We've heard, yes, we do have that equipment. Uh, we've heard we have it, but it's not operable. It's in disrepair, and you know, all the way to we've sold it off. Do we know, do we have the equipment or not? This is the information that I have regarding stump grinding. Okay. This is the extent of the information. So you, that I you don't know. Okay. So for my, my understanding is either either way, if we're going to put a stump grinder through this much work, it needs to be. If, if we do have one, it needs to be better than the one that we have. So okay. a, a new and that, one would I guess need to be okay. And that that maybe clarifies because I've heard Mark that hey, we have one. It's fully operable, and we can. Okay. All right. Well, if we can if we can confirm, yeah. right? Okay. Thanks so much. Are there other questions? Mark, I think um, part of the difficulty that we're having is um, we also know transportation is, is an issue. And that's why I think we were really concerned about trying to make sure that we were looking at the, all the community centers as a potential outlet um, for people to go to, um, whether we're talking um, having to walk in the heat or whether we're talking about having to walk in when it's freezing cold out. We have a current contract with security because we have them here at City Hall. I'm not sure whether there's been any reach out to them to ask if they were um, given 24-hour notice what would be their charge to, to be there. Again, I think one of the points that were brought up is our partners that might not have locations for people to go, but would be more than willing to have their staff have, um, be able to utilize and, and to come to a facility. Uh, we've heard that over and over again. We don't have space in our place, but we'd be glad to send staff if you've got something. and. That's whether we're talking about community mental health or, or any of those. So I think those are some of the things that need to be um, investigated and, and reached out to. I think the other part of it is, is we, I, again, we didn't do something when we had some very hot weather. Um, the prediction is that we're going to have some cold, you know, really cold weather, I would hope that we would try to have something buttoned down and answers and be able to understand where things are by the end of November, at the very latest, so that people would be able to disseminate that information and, and get it out there uh, for those that might want to, you know, or need to utilize that. Um, so those are some of the things that we need some additional information on and I guess my last question would be who's making the decision is it HRCS or is it the mayor who's making decision regarding what specifically where the who cooling and heating uh, warming centers um, might be I think it's a it's a it's it's a it's a group effort between the HRCS director and the mayor in terms of what what can go where and and how much funding we have for what we need. I, I don't think the 800 plus the 130 is is going to be sufficient to run three or four warming or cooling centers across the city. But we also know that the largest population right now is in from the city's perspective mm -hmm. is in the south. So if you even if you did it two, one in the north and one in the south, mm -hmm. it is better than having just one located at Let Center. Understood. I, I I think we also have to look at what what the need is and and where it is, and and those are all the things that we're studying that we're going to get back with you within two weeks. But, but I don't. What, but when you see say say the phrase what the need is. You're not going to know what the need is until you end up having one of those cold days and know how many people show up 
um, to that. We can estimate how many homeless we have out there, how many would sh seek shelter and, and things like that. I mean, those are things that, that you know, we have some answers to. I, I know that um, in reading over some of the minutes that came from the Ad Hoc Committee on Homelessness, when the hospitals talked about the people that were coming in and just staying in the lobbies of the hospital because the hospital's open 24 hours a day trying to seek some kind of shelter. So, you know, if you started talking with them, how many do they have out there? I mean, I think these are, are questions that again, if we're not um, asking them today, by the time this comes around, we won't have a solution. Councilmember Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. And I, I think, Mark, I, I respect and I understand the thought that we need like one location for wraparound services. I, I, I do. I think that um, we as a city need to have a location that we have wraparound services for and that could be one of the locations. But the reality is, if I'm on the south end of town, um, first of all, I don't even know how I get down to Let's, but why should I be displaced from where I'm comfortable to, to come down here? And so I think we, I would ask, because I want to be nice, because I heard I wasn't nice last time when we spoke to staff. So I would ask that we look at, um, like um, President Wood said, kind of look at the city and look at the needs. You know, I'd be interested in, as you're, you guys are, you know, as the mayor and the director are having these talks, what exactly does that mean? Does that mean that you're out talking to the COC? Does that mean you're out talking to Tri-County Office of Aging? You know, and, and they're telling you where the folks are. So I'd be interested in that, but I, I, I don't want us to um, miss the forest for the trees and the, 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 the immediate issue is that we need places for folks to go when it's extremely hot and extremely cold and that you know that might be a band-aid for a bigger larger picture of a center for wraparound services but as we wait for the center to be built and all of these wraparound services to happen people are still cold and people are still warm and so you know, it's, people are still hot. And so having these centers as a stopgap is not a bad thing either. And so I would urge the administration to kind of um, look at it as, as, as like dual paths. How do we address the, the immediate, the acute needs and services while we're looking at the long-term needs and services of our people? Thank you. Thank you. Okay, that takes us on to the next report, which is the social work, social worker housing outreach specialist, um, Emily. Okay, so the questions asked of the administration first, um, they stated lack of capacity as an issue. So please elaborate on the lack of capacity stated here. The administration's answer was this was the answer I received from CMH, so I'm unable to elaborate. Further, council is certainly welcome to inquire with CMH. And second, will this be revisited in the future if or when capacity increases? And the administration said that they would be open to that. Okay, do we have any other questions on the uh, CMH social worker housing outreach specialist? Seeing none. Okay, um, you indicated that you believe you'll be prepared to address this at the next, um, the questions that were asked at the next uh, committee of the whole? Yes, I believe that's correct. All right, so we'll make sure that we add that to the agenda. All right, um, next is a discussion on the ordinances dealing with um, HRCS. Um, I wanted to first explain that um, the two repeal sections, which are H and I, we have received recommendations from the city attorney that uh, we do not need to repeal those and that we would simply 
um, place those on file. Are there any objections to that? Councilmember Spitzley. I request a vote, please. Thank you. Pardon? I request a vote, please. Thank you. To place, yes, we would have to vote to place them. No, I request a vote on the ordinances. On the two that are for repeal? That would be correct. Thank you. Okay. Um, so would you like to take those first or would you like to go back and start on um, the first ordinance amendment for um, we can take those point. first thank you okay um, so we have um, a motion we would need a motion vice president um, <coughs> Garza on um, chapter um, 273 the repeal section um, that deals with 273.06 Okay. So with that, um, that's H on, on our agenda. Yes. And are we taking this up as a vote to, in fact, still have it repealed? Or? To approve the ordinance, yes. and the ordinance itself is to repeal that chapter and section. Okay. So do we have a vote? Uh, let's, let's. Okay. I'll move the motion forward for a vote. Okay. We have a motion. Are there any questions? Council member? Um, Jeffries. <laughs> Jeffries Brown. Thank you. I hadn't done that in a long time. I was looking for attention. Like, oh. I wanted to say Jeffries. Uh, <laughs> okay. Thank you, President Wood. And I'm laughing because my question is to make sure I'm clear. So a vote yes is to, and a vote no, could you clarify? A vote yes would mean that you are approving the repeal to move forward for a council vote. Okay. If you vote no, it means it won't be repealed. Okay, and we got clarification that we do not need to repeal these. Correct, okay. city attorney has said that we did not need to do that, but we have uh, a request from council member Spitzley to vote on these. Okay, thank you so much, I just want to clarify. Okay, thank you. is everyone clear? <coughs> Okay, all Wait those second, in I'm favor. Sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I, I am not quite clear. I'm not gonna hold anybody up here. So, okay, so if I'm a person who doesn't appreciate softening the powers of the board, how am I voting for these? No, no? okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to clarify. <laughs> all right, are you ready? Okay, <clears throat> all those in favor of repealing Section 273.06, say aye. All those opposed, say aye. 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 Okay, this is not repealed and we will place it on file. So we have a motion to place on file. Make a motion to place that on file. All right, all those in favor of placing on file, say aye. 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 Passes. Aye. Um, no. sorry. All those opposed, I'm sorry. That's okay. Aye. Okay. Aye. Aye. Two eyes. The the reason the reason we're placing it on file is because there's gonna be no more action on it. Okay, so and thank you, Madam President, for that clarification because I want to be sure. So the reason why I vote no, I just wanted to go away forever. And, and placing it on file goes away forever. Okay, um, motion to revote, please. Can we, recon I'll reconsider, motion to reconsider. Reconsider, we have a motion to reconsider. All those in favor of reconsider say aye. 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 All right, um, all those in favor of placing it on file say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Madam President. All right, now would you like to do the same with the second section, which is? 273.06? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, Vice President Garza. Okay, with that, I make a motion uh, to take up a vote on Ordinance 273.08, prohibited discrimination by city departments or employees to conform with the city charter. All right. We have a motion before us. If you vote yes, you are supporting the repeal of Section 273.08. All those in favor, say aye. All those opposed, say aye. 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 
Okay, and now we need Vice President Garza, a motion. A motion to place on file. We have a motion to place on file. All those in favor of placing it on file, say aye. 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 Okay, now we will go back to um, the um, number F, the ordinance in front of you. Uh, Mr. City Attorney, would you like to um, explain what uh, the changes are? What Most certainly. Uh, first of all, starting with the city charter and the nature of this board, this board is an advisory board. Under the city charter, you have three types of boards. You have review boards, like the planning board, zoning board of appeals, where they actually have decision-making power. And you have the board of water and light, which is a special board that has administrative power in setting utility rates. All other boards under the charter, and specifically charter, charter section 5-108, are advisory board. And advisory boards may not make policy decisions, may not exercise administrative powers, and basically give advice. So after consultation with HRCS department, after going to the HRCS advisory board, hearing comments, and going back, I think it's eight months or so, um, <clears throat> did a review of these two ordinances to just be sure uh, that they are consistent with, the provisions are consistent with those charter provisions. That's evaluating, recommending, uh, but not exercising administrative. And so that's nor crossing over into the executive branch. So those changes that you see are just simply striking out words that might be taken two ways and adding words like evaluating, recommending. Not a lot of major changes. I, I would constitute just sort of a cleanup uh, as, as a result of comments from the advisory board from the department such as, uh, for example, defining what HRCS means. That's really a, a grammar thing or a, a protocol thing. Uh, making it clear that they don't, uh, the board does not define basic human services as a policy decision and that is being made clear with the change. You can see that on page two of the first ordinance. Um, Wherever department is there, we struck it out so because HRCS is defined. Uh, going on, I'm on page uh, three of the ordinance four now. Uh, again, the uh, HRCS basic human services is a policy decision that uh, is not uh, pro is not proper for the board to make. They obviously can make recommendations, advice, and so on and so forth. Um, and the rest of it, basically the same thing, recommendations on page five. That's the first ordinance. The second ordinance. Okay, we're going to do one at a time. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, if um, the body would look at the, the major changes that you need to be um, looking at is page two, line six through eight, and page um, four, lines 20 through 22. We'll open this up for discussion at this time. Yes, Council Member Jackson. I guess when I'm focused on uh, page two, line six, when it second. Can you uh, move the mic a little bit? Yes, page two, line six, second sentence, the HRCS advisory board may make recommendations in connection with the evaluating evaluation and awarding of grants. I guess my question is, so um, who makes the final determination? Well, first of all, it has to be a budget for the grant, and then it's made by the HRCS department. Uh, if there's, it may involve council, but it's not proper for the board itself because that's an actual administrative decision. I guess just to follow up on that. So you said that who would make the decisions? The board? Well, depending the on the nature of the spending of the money, it would have to come back to council. It, 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 the variable, the nature of the grant, uh, you know, you put the money in the budget for HRCS and you have to approve it. 
but we, this is just clarifies the advisory board just makes the recommendations, but then they have to be de de it has to be determined by the board by the department or if the amount is in excess. I think it's twenty five thousand. It has to come here. So, I guess because I know we've been told a lot of times like so there's certain allocation. Um, and then, as far as what where it specifically goes, like grants and um, certain awards, is a little different. So, does it like if we have money towards like um, I guess uh, different programs, uh, homelessness prevention, or, or a program like that, and we contract out, but it's already budgeted, but we don't necessarily have to say where it goes as council, do we? Isn't right. that a job of somebody else except if the contract is over twenty five thousand dollars it's got to come back here so you have the final say on that because there's a service provider that's going to provide that service so what other about, than that it's in the budget that you approve every october isn't a large percentage of the money still under twenty five thousand dollars and spread out i'm sorry i didn't hear that so what about all of the different approvals that's under twenty five thousand dollars they would be i'm sorry and I hate to disagree with you, Jim, but the 1.35 all comes back to council for our approval, whether it's $1,000 that a group gets or whether it's $25,000. When we approve that budget and HRCS goes through, they give us that sheet that lists all the, all the providers that we're going to enter into a contract. <coughs> when we approve that, that's how come I don't vote on, on those because I am one of those that uh, my non, the nonprofit that I work for receives dollars from that. But that's the money. There also is a pot in that 1.35 that is uh, given to the department, um, and it's anywhere from thirty to $50,000 that they have that can be used uh, to match grants or for emergency um, issues that come up. It could be, you know, um, we had to move a bunch of people um, because of housing, and so they can uh, tap into those into those dollars. So that's what um, uh, those dollars have to come back to council for approval. Okay, I've got uh, Council Member Spitzley, Council Member um, Brown, and then Council Member Hussein. Thank you, Madam President. And I think that um, well, his. What, what Brian said was extremely, um, Council Member Jackson said it was extremely important. I think the gist of this um, section is what we've been hearing. And that is, is that when these grant applications come to HRCS, the role of the advisory board is to look them over, um, you know, approve, advise, recommend, whatever. And then when you said who ultimately makes the approvals, that's 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 where the issues are we're, we're hearing and when we heard it the last time is that um, HRCS makes the decisions and then they go to the mayor's office correct and so the mayor then adds his comments on them too and so the HRCS board then is saying wait you know we need to have you know the charter says we have a little bit more authority than just what had just happened, and so this language then codifies what the what the administration says the HRCS board has, which is just advisory in nature. Whereas the current ordinance gives them a lot more authority than what they have right now. What well, then gives them a lot more authority than just advisory, whether or not it's legal or not. Um, you know. Um, according to the city attorney, but the, the ordinance is what the ordinance is. And so that's one of the, that was one of the concerns that we were hearing from folk. Thank you, Madam President. Council Member Brown, then Council Member Hussein. Uh, yes, and uh, thank you, President Wood, and, and to Councilman Spitz, uh, Councilwoman Spitzley, that's you know exactly uh, the point I was going to regard as well. Um, in addition to currently the advisory board where, where we've heard concerns, from um, groups receiving or not receiving, as well as the advisory board, is that they're scoring the grant, saying, okay, here's the grants that we've scored, we said these are the ones, and then they're going HRCS potentially, 
um, is saying, you know, if there's A, B, and C organizations, they, HRCS can take those and say, oh, these are the ones who scored high that you guys are saying based on our process should get the grants, but we believe uh, X, Y, and Z, and so we're just doing X, Y, and Z regardless of that, and then they go to the administration where they can say, well, great, G, X, Y, and Z are the grants, and that's what comes to us, and we never even see what the advisory board scored. Um, so then they're saying it really puts them out of of, of play in, in hearing what the um, you know what they've actually advised, and then you know we've heard the same groups getting the same funding when um, cha uh, things have changed uh, throughout the city as far as need, and so I think that's what um, six is saying: the evaluation, examination of the elements of uh, basic human services reserved to HRCS is just saying you know for example this body approved uh, for racial equity a few years ago. So this would eliminate that as well as the advisory board is saying may make, like if you want to, but they're actually scoring the grants and making sure things are checks and balances. And this, this to me, this language um, completely uh, takes all of that process out and their authority out with this language. Thank you. Council Member Hussein. Uh, so my, my comments were actually uh, covered uh, by the previous council members, um, the, or their, their comments. The only thing I would, I, I guess, add um, is, is basically what I said a few weeks back when we introduced this instead of public hearing, in that uh, we understand the, the importance, right, of what's actually in the ordinance. If it's in conflict with, um, as an example, the charter, I think what we need to be doing um, is figuring out a way to, um, to change the charter, as an example. Um, this, this particular, I, I think the charge of this board and, and the spirit of having a diverse set of stakeholders from across the community make what are really important decisions for, as an example, very vulnerable demographics uh, throughout the city of Lansing. I think that that has to be honored. And I think we have to find a way uh, to make sure that we're scaffolding that process. Um, I don't think I don't think eviscerating, essentially, uh, the powers of, of this board um, is, is the best, best path forward. So I won't be supporting these ordinances. Um, and and I, I'm committed to uh, exploring, essentially, how we um, make this uh, palatable, not palatable, but legally, um, I should say aligned um, with the city attorney's office. Uh, and again, I'm willing to do that work. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes, I just Jim, want to, and then I have a couple of questions. I just want to point out that the whole funding process is not just in that one paragraph. If you look at page two and three, and I think it goes into four, there's a whole competitive process and you have the advisory board actually ranking the, uh, you know, so I think the input is there, uh, council member, but uh, this is just to be consistent with the charter. And no, yeah, but but I think just real quick, if I may, I think the problem um, for those of us that deeply engage uh, folks, as an example, that are parts of uh, these boards and commissions is that they feel um, that by the time they, they see the final product, right, which would be those, um, those, those awards, uh, that it is so far uh, from what they had recommended oh. Um, that they, you know, frankly, they often feel like it was just a dog and pony show. Okay. Um, and we want to guard against that. Okay. <clears throat> and I see you, Councilmember Spitzley, um, and I did see Councilmember Cost as well. Uh, a couple of questions I have for you, Mr. City Attorney. If we um, were to look at changing may make instead of shall make recommendations, and that the recommendations would be forwarded to council during the budget process. That's fine. Because what that does is then for us to see all the recommendations that have been made um, by the advisory board and then compare those to the ones that we receive from HRCS and the mayor. Is that yes, something? it's palatable. Yes, it doesn't. It doesn't take away from the recommending function. It's not making decisions. It's it's basically a process, but also still recommending and ranking and all that, which we have right now in the ordinance. So those Council changes can be made. Yes, Councilmember Spitzley. Thank you, Madam President. I think it needs a little bit more work than than just today because my concern is. Um, similar to what happened earlier in the year when we finally got the scoring matrix for some of the grants. And, and as Councilmember um, Brown said, 
Some grants scored higher than others and weren't awarded. Some grants that scored very low were given more money than the, than the highest scoring grant. And so it highest scoring um, <coughs> entity it, without an explanation of, of why that happened. And so, you know, um, having it, having the um, recommendations come to council um, before the awarding of grants during the budget time, as, as, as long as it's coming directly from the advisory board, so the chair of the advisory board shall provide in writing their recommendations to council, um, that, I, that is, I, 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 could, I could probably live with that. But I want to also just be, um, I'm not a big fan of quick fixes, and I agree with council member Hussein that um, this might be needed to be looked at as it, in a bigger picture, and if it requires an ordinance, I'm sorry, a charter change, then we need to look at it. I don't want to end up then next year NIF 9 over language and the intent of language, and um, we know that that's what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, if we're going to change it, I think we, we want to do a little bit more thought than, and, and take this back and, and work on it. Um, so I'm not prepared to approve any changes today. Thank you. Just so you know, this is only up for discussion. There is no Thank action you. item on this. I had not intended to do an action item Thank on you. this um, tonight. Council Member Cost. Thank you, President Wood. I just wanted to echo um, some of the concerns there. And I think that um, my concerns go further in the fact that we've had this on the books since the 90s. Um, and it's just a problem now. And I sat in at the HRCS meeting. Um, it, we can change all day long some verbiage in there, but there's until there's actual respect for that board and those board members, because I saw a lack of respect or, um, you know, even listening to them or the recommendations during that meeting, it was very hostile. Um, I have concerns that any kind of wording will work. Um, I remember an instance last year where. Um, ENO had to deal, you know, something happened where it was Ken and Shale um, with a law, um, and they were playing the word game. Um, so, you know, I don't want to, I think that Councilman uh, Hussein and, and Councilmember Spitzley are right that we need to look deeper into this and, and fix the structural issue to make this right, because I think that this board has an important charge here in the city, um, and, you know, folks didn't um, ask me to represent them, to strip them of their voice um, and and that's what this will do um, so I'm going to be a no vote on these changes again we're not taking any action on, on this we are looking at some suggestions that we have the city attorney look at and take back council <laughs> I know <laughs> okay council, council member Jackson Thank you. Just piggybacking on Councilman Hussein's points about um, bigger changes and bigger picture, that kind of implies charter changes. And, you know, it seems so there's the Charter Review Commission coming up. Um, am I allowed to support that? But um, besides no, that, not I mean. Really. <laughs> just we'll pretend you didn't do that. I oh, I, I mean, I don't, oh, I'm sorry. I was looking the other way. I didn't even see that, so I don't know yeah, what happened. So I guess my point is, is that do we want to get ahead of that and start thinking of things that we want to see? Or are we just going to wait how the year the vote comes and then the years later to maybe see charter changes? Because, um, you know, it seems like there's a lot of people that have that interest about different types of tar charter changes. And this, if that's what people are looking at, this would be first on the list that should say, this is one of the things we need to look at that fully ingrains forever the power of the board. That's all I have to say. I appreciate everyone's comments. I guess the question I would have at this particular time is if we did nothing at this point to make any strengthening of um, in, in some ordinance changes is the recommendation going to be from the city attorney's office 
to HRCS that because this is his est estimation that doesn't comport with the charter that they don't aren't able to do anything. And I don't want that to be the end result. <clears throat> so I guess, Jim, that would be um, another question out there. Well, yeah. it would, may I answer? Yeah. It would be a, a <clears throat> fact intensive, depending on what the decision is by the board. If the, if the board is exercising administrative or policy decision, we'd have to advise them they couldn't do it. And wherever that went, we'd have to make that same advice to whether this council or the mayor's office. So. It's hard to say, just blanket, um, what our uh, recommendation or advice would be, would, depending on what, what the actual circumstances are. But yes, you're right. We would have to say, well, you can't do this. That's what I'm afraid of. Council Member Spitzley and Council Member Jackson. Thank you, Madam President. So, you know, I think I, I, get, I, I get what um, the city attorney said, although, you know, they're pretty much on record saying that they don't have the, the authority to do so. Um, but so I, I, we keep on working then. I guess we keep on discussing and um, working drafts. I don't know which committee this is in. Um, it's in this committee. Okay, then it's maybe we need, we need to, then I think we keep it in committee as a whole and keep having discussions and changing it. I just, you know, I think that it is important enough for us to, if we, if we must do something, and I'm not quite sure we do, but if we must, and if that's what the body says, then we need to keep working on it because I think it's not there yet. I don't see where that this right here, particularly where it says may make recommendations, does you know gives any comfort. Um, and I like I like what you proposed, President Wood. Um, but the language has to be a little stronger so that that information comes straight from the advisory board to council and is not, you know, you know, um, you know, watered down before it gets here. So I, I would need to have and, some, some and protection. My, my thought process on this would be that at the same time that we receive the HRC uh, budget we're receiving the recommendations that are coming from the advisory board and looking we've got them right here and council does not you know I've been on council when we have said we're not going to fund that one group we're going to fund this group and they've had to go back and and make changes um, to that because again um, you know uh, it doesn't become a budget till this body passes it as a budget. Me. So what does that do? I see you. I see the wheels turning. So my concern is, is that at some point there's there's a there's a crossover of powers here, and and you're going to say that that's not a, that's not an authority that council has. I, I, so oh, that yes, we do have that. Well, I'm, but you, I'm just I'm just saying because I'm looking at the, I'm looking at the wheels and I want to make sure that <laughs> that's not going to come out next. Depends on the question. I mean, it, what the president suggested actually would, would work. Okay. Shall report to. So. Yeah. Council. Council Member Jackson, I saw your hand. Thank you. So I guess my thought is to for people's worries that if we didn't do anything and it stayed in place. So for one, it hasn't happened since the ordinance was there, for one. And for two, I can not imagine a situation where at least the board will be tasked with making recommendations, which is like, you know, a subcategory of, of having real say. But um, also, if we don't do anything and something does where, where the city attorney has to make a recommendation or say something, then that should be an alert for council that, oh, something's not, you know, going to get, it's obviously something's wrong with the board and the recommendations. And then we would then become involved because, again, we haven't seen this happen before, except for recently there's been some type of, I guess, lack of uh, even sight. So, Councilmember Jackson, I think what the problem was is many of the board members previously weren't attuned with what their responsibilities were. And there was a request 
from um, board members to have a better understanding of what their authority as they were moving forward and and um, making recommendations and where that fell in in and that's where this came about so if you're doing things the same as usual for 20 years and nobody's told you oh by the way here's the ordinance read it and see what you're responsible for um, you wouldn't know that that might be part of it and that's one of the things that I've been emphasizing about board trainings and making sure that the boards, as they come on, as board members come on, they understand what their responsibilities are. Councilmember Brown. Uh, thank you so much. I, yeah, I agree with everything that you've said as well as Councilman Hussein, uh, but I would like to add in um, most of the other boards, like for example, the Parks and Recreation Board, they're involved in the entire department, you know, whatever outcomes, decisions, recommendations. And so at the HRC, as I've heard from a few board members, for example, like uh, human human rights issues or how many, um, maybe not the details, but police investigation and different things that's a part of the department, not just the grants, wanting to be a, you know, are, are we an, <coughs> excuse me, the comment has been made, are we an advisory board for the department or just the grants? And if we're for the department as an advisory board to make sure that we're also, you know, a part of the dialogue and the conversation, um, you, you know, as a community voice, uh, they've indicated that they've been left out of, you know, pretty much anything that's going on in the department but the grants. So I would just say that if we're talking about reporting or different um, issues within the department, that we are looking at um, having language that, you know, also make sure that they're having access to, you know, the department, not just the advisory board over the grant administration of the 1.35%. Uh, Thank you. So I think at, at this point, um, what we'll do is um, we have additional suggestions. We will uh, make sure that Sherry gets them and can pass them on uh, to the city attorney. But again, as I indicated, this was just for discussion. We're not moving anything until we're comfortable about moving something, if at all. OK? OK. Uh, with that, um, that takes us uh, to closed session. Uh, Vice President Garza. OK, I move to closed session pursuant to MCL 15.2681E. I hereby move that we recess into closed session to consult with the city attorney in connection with the following specific pending litigation. An open meeting will have a de uh, detrimental financial effect on the litigation, uh, litigating or settlement position of the city of Lansing concerning these cases. Atkins, Atkinson et al. versus city of Lansing et al. People of the city of Lansing versus Colbert, city of Lansing et al. versus Purdue Pharma. That's opioid litigation. Uh, Depreckel versus City of Lansing et al. Downtown Capital LLC versus City of Lansing. Hardy versus City of Lansing. Uh, Hulon versus City of Lansing. Uh, Korami versus Bradbury, Moore, Mapley, and the City of Lansing. Legacy 5 LLC versus City of Lansing. Lugo Estoc, Guadalupe versus City of Lansing. Lynn Michael v. City of Lansing, Lynn Michael v. Shore et al., 2023, Phillips v. City of Lansing et al., Stuart G. v. City of Lansing et al., and Stuart S. v. City of Lansing et al. Pursuant to MCL 15.2681H of the Open Meetings Act, City Council will recess into closed session to consult with the City Attorney to consider material uh, exempt from discussion or disclosure by the state statute, specifically to discuss written material from the city attorney provided under the attorney client privilege and attorney work product, and which is also exempt from the disclosure under the Freedom of Information Act pursuant to MCL 15.2431G. And we also received a request from the mayor to have Mark Lawrence attend the closed session. All right. All right. All right, the, we'll vote on the um, first um, A for closed session. All those, oh, uh, roll call, please. Councilmember Wood? Yes. 
Councilmember Brown? Yes. Councilmember Spitzley? Yes. Councilmember Garza? Yes. Councilmember Jackson? Yes. Councilmember Cost? Yes. Councilmember Hussein? Yes. Motion carries 7 0 on the first motion. Uh, for B, uh, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Councilmember Brown? Yes. Councilmember Spitzley? Yes. Councilmember Jackson? Yes. Councilmember Cost? Yes. Councilmember Wood? Yes. Councilmember Garza? Yes. Councilmember Hussein? Hussein. <laughs> Motion carries 7 0 on the second. Okay, we are now going into recess. Recess for closed session, yes. We'll call the meeting back to order. And at this time, we are adjourned, uh, the Committee of a Whole, and we will uh, start the council meeting in five minutes. <laughs>